All right, welcome back to the Attack the Rack YouTube channel. This is the Attack the Rack daily lineup show with myself, Big Mo, and Trent. Today is Tuesday, July 16. We're going to start with um, the Euro final Sunday afternoon. Uh, as I mentioned on the Monday, li Monday morning live show, uh, soccer is not a sport that I typically watch. I do have an invested interest in England as it is currently become a home away from home. So I thought I'd check it out. I always kind of feel like the gameplay in soccer, I assume, is is not that exciting. You know, the, the score is always low. You don't have a lot of scoring, assuming not exciting. And there wasn't a lot of scoring. It was 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. But I tell you what, it kept me on the edge of my seat. It was super exciting. Um, Zero zero at halftime, um, and then Spain ended up scoring pretty early on in the in the second half. Uh, England tied it back up with, as you would say in soccer terminology, the seventy third minute. And um, how how we kind of clock sports here in the U.S. seventeen minutes to go, England ties it up, and then. Uh, <laughs> Spain got the game-winning goal with just a couple minutes left in the game. Trent, I know you did not watch it live because, and we'll get to why that is in a little while, in a little while. But um, any thoughts on the Euros? And then we can maybe touch on the Copa too. I didn't, I didn't watch that, but the the crazy. The only thing uh, that we need to talk about from the Copa is those people, the Colombian fans. That's what I'm that saying. We're sneaking in through the vents and like hopping the fence and it was madness it was there's people who like bought tickets for their seats couldn't get in their seat and yes. just it was a madhouse in miami for that game um but the euro game um one of the guys i follow had spain as like a future to win it yeah. so that ended up paying like eight to one so that was pretty good um i did not watch it i was kind of trying to keep track of it sure. for the most part um i was kind of surprised that when it was 1-0 that England ended up scoring to tie it up. Um, but then Spain ended up winning 2-1, right? Yeah, 2-1, to one, yeah. They, I and think just the whole game, just the regular 90-minute game didn't go into extra time or anything like that. So right. that was, yeah, that's a good win for Spain. They're they're good. They're a good squad. Well, that that's what you – know, and I obviously don't didn't know this going into the game, but the announcers were saying that they are right now the probably the best in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, with the with the Copas, uh, you know, when I, I on, on one of the episodes last week, I was talking about the the documentary about the the last Euros that were hosted in in or the, the final that was hosted at Wembley in London. When I was that's what I was saying. Very similar uh, situation in in the last Euros at Wembley in London that we saw here in Miami. Uh, Big Mo, uh, did you see what went on in Miami at all? Any of the clips? I just saw the I saw some highlights of the guys sneaking in through the vents or you know, <laughs> busting through the fence there and like yeah, wild. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't delve into it very much after that because I was just like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so that was the Copa that was down in in Miami. Miami. That was yeah. So. And, you know, I, you know, I, I actually, I, I enjoy soccer. Yeah. When my daughter was playing. Sure. That's the only reason I would ever watch it. Yeah. Um, it I think it'd take a lot for me to get into it. Besides the fact that I do think it is, you get into some of these uh, big time games, the competitiveness uh, between the two teams and, and even the fans sometimes is, is, uh, is kind of intriguing to watch. Yeah. Uh, and, and did, I don't even know, Trent, you know, did Columbia win? Who did they even play? I don't even Ooh. know. Uh, they played Argentina. I think they, <laughs> I think they won. Um, while well, you look that up real quick, um, now you got to wonder though, because the U.S. is supposed to host the World Cup, the next World Cup, which I'm not sure what year that is. It's coming up in the next two years. Maybe is it 26? Two years, yeah. But it's like U.S., Mexico, Canada. Okay. So we'll, we'll probably have like two or three locations, maybe. Okay. Well, wherever the U.S. location is, hopefully now they're well aware of what can happen and yeah. take better measures. Yes. 
<laughs> um, well, uh, you looking that up, Trent? Argentina, 1-0. Okay, Argentina. Oh, Argentina won that game. So that's the other thing about I feel like every time I do pay attention to a soccer game and watch a soccer game, it's always so close within a goal or two. And that yeah. just keeps, keeps you interested. I think it's very rare for like soccer games to get out of hand. Like there's just, like you don't see too many like five zero, four zero, anything much above four. Um, but yeah, it's usually pretty low scoring defensive battles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, um trending or, or switching over from the most popular sport in the world to what once was the most popular sport in the United States of America. Uh, America's pastime baseball, the Detroit Tigers. Sorry, you know, if you guys are watching from from some somewhere else around the country, apologize here for just a second. We got to talk about our home team here, the Detroit Tigers. What a run they are on heading yeah. into the All-Star break. They've won four out of five. Um, they took two wins. From, most recently from the Dodgers, which we'll get into. Two wins pri in the series prior to that from uh, the Cleveland Guardians, which last I knew they had one of the best records in Major League Baseball. Um, and then prior to that uh, series, they swept the Cincinnati Reds. So um, I think they're within three games now of 500. So definitely trending upward as we head into the All-Star break. Um, but the thing with the two wins – the most two recent wins over the Dodgers, they were both walk-off wins. Um, Big Mo, I know you had mentioned you caught the end of the game on Saturday night, correct? Take what what happened? Take us. Well, I'm not going to say I paid attention too much to it, but we entered. Uh, I was with my brother and my older brother, my older sister, up in Ludington. Um, just finished doing some yard work, and. Uh, Went out for a uh, a cold beverage. Much earned. The game, the game happened to be on. It was I think nine to four going into the bottom of the ninth. Unreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother mentioned something like I think they got a hit, and so I think maybe it got to like nine six, and my brother said something about put the rally caps on, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was nine nine, and then boom, you know, walk off in the tenth, right? Um, yeah, so again, it wasn't super paying attention. I couldn't tell you uh, what was the, the the Colton kid is the one who tied it up in the ninth, I believe, with a, with a homer. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, from what I've from what I've read and what I've listened to, the pitching has kind of been there all year. It's kind of been the bats have been a little bit of a lull for the Tigers. So it's uh, good to see those things come alive. Probably. I don't know. Is it good that, you know, does it help them to have an outbreak with the all-star break or yeah, is that you, something that kind of hinders them as they come back? Yeah. You, you'd hate, you hate to, for it to be a, a momentum um, stopper. Um, Trent now Trent was actually at the game on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through, take us through that, how that one ended with some bunting. <laughs> it, was, it was the most long, like the long ball on Saturday, the small ball on Sunday. It was the most like middle school kind of plays too <laughs> that you would think a professional pitcher would make. Uh, I would give them the benefit of the doubt on the first bunt just because it was kind of popped up and had a lot of backspin. So once it landed, it just kind of zipped on them, took a funny bounce. And I just the second play though, the one where he's falling on his ass trying to throw it to third it's like dude just throw, get the out or yeah. just hold on to it and try to get a double play but instead he makes tries to make the hero play and throw some falling sidearm something to the third baseman and throws it just blows it right by him and we just walk across home plate to win the game so it was i don't know it was pretty wild it was so hot at the game yeah it was oh my gosh i stood in the shade for probably four innings just like <laughs> under like a canopy balcony kind of thing yeah uh, but it was it was fun i haven't been to comerica in a while good atmosphere um stadium's nicer than i think they get credit for um it's it's a nice little spot they got going on in detroit downtown detroit yeah. um fun game i'd go back and they're they're kind of rolling right now too so it yeah. makes it more intriguing 
Um, yeah, no, you mentioned Comerica. It's a beautiful park. It's hard to imagine that it's like 20, 24 years old now. I think 99 was the last year in the old Tiger Stadium. I think yeah. it seems out. like it's pretty up to date for the most yeah. part. I know they added on to the big video board. It's like one of the biggest video boards in baseball or something like that. Well, I think when they originally built it, it was the biggest video board in the country, period. Any sport, any stadium. Okay. Yeah, and they, they added on to it. It pretty much takes up all of left field. Yeah. But it's pretty sweet. They got it looks good. They they do a good job and it'd be nice if we could win a little bit more, but hey, we're around we're right around five hundred now, so that's not that's not too bad. I think we're like twelve games back of the Guardians, but just keep momentum hopefully after All Star Break. Yeah, well I I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jog uh um Big Mo's memory here, get Big Mo's memory going. But last time I was at Comerica was 2016. It's been eight years. Big Mo, and I went, yeah, Big Mo and I went to a game with Big Mo's brothers. Sat front row, right field. Um, I think JD Martinez was was with the Tigers at that time, still playing right field, and I think they were playing the Mets. And Tigers were up one run, top of the ninth, New York Mets, uh, base hit guy. I don't remember if the guy was on second or third. He probably was on – must have been on second. Tried to score, and J.D. gunned him down at the plate to end the game. Tigers win. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, we were on TV. Nice. That was, that was probably my first time at Comerica since – uh, I was probably like 14, okay. maybe. Yeah. It has a long time ago. Yeah. A long time. But yeah, it was nice. I'd go back. It was it was pleasant. Yeah, I'd love to go to a a, a game as long as it wasn't so hot. It uh, was so hot. It was <laughs> hey, well, how was the crowd there, Trent? Good crowd, uh, good turnout, good turnout. Um it was decent. It wasn't like Saturday's crowd from what I saw on TV wise. Um it was uh a lot of people were fighting for the shade, so that kind of cleared out some certain sections. Um, there's like a little balcony that you can get like the top like seven or eight rows at the top, and they everybody that was upper deck kind of just like crowded to those areas. But um, lower deck wise, because I was like upper deck, like first row, first baseline, and then lower bowl seemed pretty pretty full for the most part. Yeah, it was a good turnout. I always I don't want to get off topic here, guys, but I thought maybe this might be an interesting get your guy. I mean, maybe Kurt can't give us his views, but you know, currently uh, Trent, you're single. I think you yeah, know, I'm a single <laughs> guy. Jump on the dating apps every once in a while. I'm always <laughs> amazed at how many women are Tigers or baseball fans. Yeah, you got to put that in quotations though. <laughs> it's it's. it's I can. I mean, I don't think I, I. Like I said, I don't think I've been to a game probably since 2016. Maybe, maybe one time in between there with my kids, but um, <laughs> I'm just always game. amazed that every every profile is like a oh, big Tigers fan, <laughs> baseball. Yeah, I'm just they, like, they, oh, they, goodness. I don't know. I don't know. Just I wanted to throw that out there. But those ladies probably go just as often as you go. To the okay. Tiger. Right. Is that you know? <laughs> that might be fair. I don't know. I don't they're know. hitting the sports niche of of guys on that are on the dating apps. Okay. All right. I appreciate the uh, the. It's the like uh, it's like target marketing. Hey. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wise. Yeah. Probably wise on there. Okay. That that <laughs> one that one surprised me if if the Tigers were good because I feel like when the Tigers had that that whoa ten year run where they were at least competitive every year. I think there there's tons of Tiger fans that came out of the woodworks, but oh for sure. They've been, they've been so bad now the last few years that that actually that surprises me, Big Mo. Yeah. <laughs> like the Maglio Rodonez uh was that a walk off against the A's, I think. Was that 06? Yes, that was that, amazing. That's like a core mem childhood memory of mine is that. I have uh were so good. I have a video on the channel. Um, try, I know you, you might be a little too young. Have you ever heard of the movie The Natural? 
with Robert Redford. Mm -mm. No, not no. only not only the best baseball movie of all time, probably one of the best movies, period, of all time. Really? Um, so I put together this video. The with, hot take, Curdy. Yeah. The That's... sound the um the sound of the of the movie set I, I took the sound and I put it to uh Magli Ordonia's hitting the hitting that home run. Uh I, I just get chills just thinking about that moment. And in fact, Big Mo, let me jog your memory here. Um uh, uh that was when girls basketball here in the state of Michigan was still in the fall and okay. you were coaching the girls team at Fenville. Uh, and I was a, a, an assistant for you. And we, for some random reason, it was a Saturday and we had a Saturday afternoon game. And so we, uh, we missed most of the game, but we were able to get back to my place and shout out Tony Peckis. If you're out there listening, uh, you me, Tony Peckis, we met up with, uh, Damon Hecken, who's been a guest on the on the channel, um, and, and we met up at my place and caught. We got home, the home just in time to see that walk off. Oh, uh, Kurt, what a memory! Jeez, I got I Sweet. short term memory, horrible. <laughs> totally forgot to let my parents' dog out today. Horrible short term memory, uh, <laughs> but I have an incredible long term memory. I don't know. It's crazy, but hey, not to not to get off tax one more time, Kurt. But <laughs> you you need to take a you need to probably get like a quick view of uh, the the natural oh. classic okay. movie. But Robert Redford, underrated movie, The Last Castle. If you haven't seen that, if you haven't seen that, okay, underrated movie. Take a peek at it. I think it's Robert Redford as well. The Last okay. Castle. The All Last. Right. Castle. I've Last never Castle. heard of that one. Oh man. Yeah. Classic. All right, sweet. <laughs> I'm always up for a good movie suggestion, uh, especially in this day and age when they all suck. So um, <laughs> let's move on to another American pastime that has become very popular over the last probably 40 years now, and that's video games. Huge video game released. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think yesterday was first day. It was, it was yeah, yeah. Um, College football 25 uh, have not had a college football release since – when was the last one, Trent? It's been about 10 years? I think it was 14, yeah. yeah. Um, and now completely different because of NIL and – and um, True. Players' names are actually out of the game now. Um, I haven't played it. <laughs> I don't have a way no. to play it. I don't – Me, I you know – I don't have a way to play either. I have computer and it's not made for a computer. It's really? made for PlayStation and Xbox only. Yeah. Only. Yep. But it looks pretty sweet. I think uh, eventually it'll get put on like PC or computer, but wow. as of right now, it's not. Um, yeah. There's I mean, a few games like that as well. Like the MLB game is like that. Okay. Um, NHL is like that. So there's certain, maybe it's just sports games, but. There's certain ones that are like that. Well, obviously, uh, causing a huge buzz. I mean, it, it's been it's been people have been highly anticipating it for. It's been it seems like the last year it's been known that it was going to come out. Yeah, uh, and, and and all I see I see it all over the place now. People playing it. Uh, I know Big Cat from Pardon My Take from Barstool Sports. He's going to do. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught this at all during the pandemic. He called himself. He created a coach called Coach Dugs. Yeah. And, and he and he, during the pandemic, he just did season after season after season, getting different coaching jobs, and then playing a season with that school. So he's back at it with that. Uh, um, so great, um, great entertainment. Um, but like I said, you know, I haven't played a new video game probably since PlayStation Two. Um, Surprised you guys weren't on like the um, the Super sixty four or what was before the Nintendo well, sixty four? Uh Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Yeah, I have, so, I have a I I still have a Nintendo the original and I have the Super Nintendo. So was that your guys' kind of era of video games as kids? Was yeah. Super Nintendo? I mean, it, it started with Nintendo. You know, we were, you know, eight nine. 
I mean, I, well, I'll tell you right now, the greatest video game of all time, Tecmo Super Bowl, that came out in like 90 or 91. So I would have been 10 or 11. That was still okay. on the original Nintendo. Okay. So I remember getting a, a, a Super Nintendo in, in, in like maybe eighth grade, but I think it had already kind of been out for a year or two maybe. And then that was the thing all through till late in high school. And that's when the PlayStation came out and the, and the Nintendo 64. Okay. And those were kind of the thing in, through college. And then I got one more system late college, uh, and that was the PS2. And I really haven't played video games since, except for still breaking out the Nintendo from time to time. As Big no Big Mo knows, we, have, we played actually in a couple of Tecmo Super Bowl tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Big Mo, fun times. That's awesome. Uh, Big Mo, I'm guessing you have not played <laughs> college football 25. Yeah, I, yeah, I will be honest. Uh, I was in. I was the friend that sucked at video games, so everyone wanted to kick my ass, and usually <laughs> did. And just never very good at the games. Um, you know, my son right now is like, my son right now plays, goes to these tournaments, and plays um, Street Fighter or Tekken, oh, like, like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. That's I think that's Street Fighter. Yeah, he was getting so. into Mortal Kombat a little bit, but now you'll, he he really wants to. He's trying to. I don't know. He plays mostly in the Street Fighter games. Okay, um, and he does like cash tournaments and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. He hasn't won one yet, but he said uh, this past weekend. Um, and I can't think of his. I can't think of his gamer tag right now, but it's good. Um, <laughs> he. Uh, he competed with a couple of top guys in Michigan and didn't didn't get his butt kicked. So he was pretty pretty excited that he's getting better. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. But I was the one. I I I play a game, get my butt kicked, and then I didn't want to play anymore. So. Well, that's fair. That, that makes me feel pretty bad, Big Mo, because in the last Tech Bowl tournament, you beat me. <laughs> well, Kurt, that's you know after after years of coaching football, I've gotten. I've <laughs> <laughs> Picked up some some X's and O's from Coach you, Dudes. The quick it, slant. You were looking at my controller and seeing what play I was picking. Oh, I couldn't even tell you, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny you bring up Street Fighter because that that's a name from the past too. Because I remember um, that first coming out on Super Nintendo <laughs> back in the yeah, they, uh, mid nineties. It, it kind of seems like they're just like remastering games that came out yeah. a while ago and just making them better, I guess, or at least graphics wise. For sure. Um, they need to do that then too with uh, NBA jam. That was a, classic. yeah, it would be awesome. That was, yeah. That was pop that was super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. So it, same with street, yeah. fighter. street fighter, mortal Kombat. Those were, uh, those came out with, with the like Sega Genesis and super Nintendo. They were, they were the competitors. They were, they were in the same era competing against each other. So, uh, but um, one last thing, fellas. Major League Baseball uh, All Star Game tonight. Last night, home run derby. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez from the uh, Dodgers won it. Uh, first of all, anybody watch? I didn't. Nope, I did not watch. The only thing I saw highlights from was the drunk chicks singing the national anthem. And she was drunk, and she came out just today and said she was drunk, and she is going to rehab. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, that, they they were saying, like, the caption I saw was, like, worse than Fergie, and then everyone was just like, yep, 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 yep. And so, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It was not worse than Carl Lewis, but, oh, my gosh, it was horrible. Bless her heart. Apparently she was intoxicated. Uh, she sang it from the heart, though. Obviously, <laughs> she wasn't intentionally like making fun of the anthem or anything like Rosie O'Donnell did years ago, or uh, not Rosie O'Donnell. Um, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? <laughs> uh, big Mole. Uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> Roseanne Barr, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Roseanne Barr, Roseanne Barr did a rendition of the Rosie O'Donnell. That was probably like 30. <laughs> Uh, Roseanne Barr did a rendition of the 
national anthem before a baseball game and she was intentionally singing bad so but yeah that was that was rough yeah uh but yeah i haven't watched the home run derby in years i i don't like the new style where they have a clock i think one of the beautiful things about baseball is there is no time there is no clock you've always got one last out to try to come back and win and that's how the home run derby used to be as well um yeah um, but I do want to know, fellas, in honor of the home run derby, who will start with you, Big Mo? Uh, we talked about on the podcast Saturday morning our favorite baseball players growing up. Now I want to know who is your favorite home run hitter of all time. All t- oh, man. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I think I think being a tiger guy, Kurt. Trent, you, you, you got to mention the big the big guy, <laughs> Cecil Fielder. Come on. Yeah, um, you took mine. <laughs> you know, I, obviously, home run-wise. You know, the the other name that just sticks with you, because it's a great name, is the crime dog. Yeah, Fred McGriff. <laughs> Fred McGriff, baby. Come yeah. on. So, I'm going to leave it at those two. All right. All right, Trent. Favorite home, favorite home run hitter of all time. Well, I grew up steroid era so that was um pretty exciting for baseball i think yeah. um so there it's got to be a mix between like barry bonds and mark mcguire sure. um sammy sosa because the whole like cork bat thing i was yeah. a kid growing up when that whole thing happened but i would say those three are the most electric home run hitters sure. but i also went through like a baseball era of trying to be like gary sheffield oh Cause he was, he had that like weird bat swing kind of thing, that wiggle or whatever. Yeah, so I, yeah. I kind of like, I always like kind of mocking his, uh, his batting stance and, but yeah, he's a good power hitter. Ken Griffey as well. There's so many, it's a hard choice. Um, yeah. So I was going to say Cecil Fielder, Big Mo took that. I'll, I'll say somebody else I'll say, and I can't, I don't like the guy anymore and I didn't like him for a majority of his career, but when he, when he first came up to the big leagues for the Oakland A's, uh, and took the league by storm along with Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco. I was a huge mm. fan, 87, 88, 89 of his. And uh, so I guess I'll go with him just because I was uh, at that. He was, he was my favorite player by far uh, then. Um, Trent, you brought up Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, yeah. That's another great pick. Smooth. One of the most beautiful swings of all time. Um, and then going when back. Going back to the Tigers, too, even before uh, Cecil Fielder, but also played first base, Daryl Evans. Oh, Daryl Evans, yeah. 34? <laughs> Anywhere 34? I don't remember yeah. his number. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Oh, well, he was a good one, too. Oh, yeah. You guys are old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, old and wise, Trent. Old and wise. Right. All right. Real quick here, we're we're about out of time. Last question: Major League Baseball game, All Star All Star game tonight. Uh, Trent, are you gonna watch? No. Sigmo, are you gonna watch? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> All right, fellas, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.